All right, welcome back. Uh, so we've got our first ever uh, Ionic app uh, made. Uh, we got the template going here. Uh, in general, things are going good. I had some weird problems with the uh, the GitHub source control. <laughs> I figured out what the problem, by the way, is I typed hyphen git so it wouldn't make a git repo, but then it still ran all these git commands. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it this time. Uh, I'm just going to worry about fixing it next time. Um, so moving on. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to start um, adding content to this guy. So in the default template, it said Ionic Blank, and it said the world is your oyster, uh, learn from the docs. Uh, let's go modify that. So what we're going to do to do our modifications is we're going to do our work in the source folder again. Uh, just to kind of quickly look at the folders, uh, there's node modules, which you know what that is, what's where all the NPM things go. Uh, there's a folder called hooks, uh, which we're not going to use or worry about. Uh, but this is things like plugins. Uh, so if you want to like work with the camera or accelerometer, uh, you'd have to worry about things like that. We're we're teaching you kind of the the intro stuff about Ionic, so we're not really using any native plugins, which is where all the like heavy lifting comes in. Uh, resources uh, these are like for icons and things like that with iOS and Android. Uh, source is where all your code lives. Uh, and then www, this is the equivalent to the disk folder that Angular had. It's a little different because Angular, um, when you were doing deployment, it, it lived somewhere you couldn't even see. It was so far under the hood. And then when you were ready to deploy, you said, um, you know, build for prod, and it would make a disk folder. Um, here you're just um, you're using the www all the time for development uh, or for deployment. Inside the source folders, that's where the most of the interesting things happen. Uh, there's an app folder, uh, which we'll need to worry about the app folder. Uh, there's a pages folder. This is where our pages are for our app, so we'll have to worry about that. A theme, which we'll do a little bit of work in this time. Uh, and then assets, you know, like icons and things. So what we're going to start with is in the uh, source, pages, uh, the home page, um, and the HTML. We changed favorite things in here last time. Uh, now we're going to do some more work with the content. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is blow away the existing con content. Uh, you can see that just like the Angular CLI, it auto-updates. And what I'm going to add back is I'm going to add back an H2, uh, so favorite things. So we'll start with just an H2, which is something that you know. Uh, as soon as I hit save, it shows up there, uh, except for the fact that I want to say favorite color, not favorite things. Uh, so this is my favorite color area. So now I'm going to make um, some, um, some components for Ionic. Um, and what I want to do, I guess I should look at the solution here. Um, so I kind of want to like set this up into like a grid system. I kind of like using, um, it's kind of really similar to Bootstrap's grid system, uh, but we're going to set it up with Ionic. Uh, and by the way, we should probably make a bookmark. Um, we should probably go ahead and bookmark um, the Ionic components. Uh, so ionicframework.com slash docs, and then I clicked on components, uh, and then I clicked on overview just because I didn't really have anywhere else that I needed to click. Uh, but it's probably worthwhile to uh, bookmark this link. Uh, and add it into our ng fire area. So I'm going to call it Ionic Components. Um, and there's all kinds of things that we can learn about in the Ionic Component. Um, but the way we run this class is we just kind of learn about things as we need them. Uh, so we're going to learn about the Ionic Grid first. Uh, so here's an example of an Ionic Grid. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy some of this code and I'm just going to paste it in over here. Um, and then I'm going to auto format and save it up and just see what this does. So it says this column will take 12 columns. This one will take six. Uh, we come over, look over here. The one that takes 12 was kind of not long enough for our page, so I'm just going to add some more junk. Uh, but you can see that it takes 12 columns. It gets the whole width, and six gets cut off there. So this works like Bootstrap, if you happen to know Bootstrap. Um, it breaks the page up into 12 columns, um, and you can have you know as many columns as you want. Uh, but that's how their grid system uh, is set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a uh, box uh, on top. Uh, and so this box is going to be our only item. So we're going to kill this other row here. We're going to eventually add another row, but we don't need it yet. We've got a grid that's four big. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a box, right? So I'm going to give it an ID uh, of the word box. And we're just trying to build this box right here. 
Um, and so it's got an ID of box. It's got a column span of four. Uh, you could also do a thing uh, where you give it an offset uh, of four as well. Uh, and just to see something in there, let's put the word uh, gray in there. So now I should have a box that says the word gray, uh, which is good. Uh, let's go add some CSS uh, to this guy. So they defaulted to sassy CSS. I was very happy with that. They do work just a little bit different than how Angular worked. Um, if you remember in the TypeScript with Angular, it said like style URLs and it had like style URLs here. Here it, it uses a different system. Um, so the way its system work is it just gives you a file called home CSS. Um, it's got this tag that says home page uh, and everything you do for CSS should go inside this rule. By doing it this way, they're able to, to do some other optimizations, which is neat. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to put some rules on here for our box. Uh, so for example, the first rule we'll put on is that it has a height of 100 pixels uh, and a background color uh, of gray for now. So we'll just say background color of gray. Uh, and as you save these things up, you know, you should see them happening, uh, which is kind of neat, right? So you can just kind of see your, your code come to life. Um, in addition to a background color of gray, there's a bunch of other things I want to do. I want a text align of center, uh, and so that should take the word gray and make it centered. Uh, and then a line height of 100 pixels. This is a trick for vertical centering, uh, so now it's vertically centered in the box. It doesn't look perfect in the box, uh, but that's because of the padding. So we can say padding zero, uh, and I think that should center it up a little bit better, which is good. I also want the text to show up in white, uh, so I'm going to say color white, uh, and then there it shows up in white, um, and I think that's good enough for now. Uh, so we've kind of got our box, and this is where our favorite colors uh, are going to show up at. The next thing we want is we want another row, so an ion row, um, and in this other row we're going to put a bunch of buttons. Uh, and so these buttons are going to have something in common with this uh, up here, so I'm going to copy from here. Uh, my buttons are going to all be four columns wide, uh, but instead of having a word inside of there, they're going to have a button. Uh, as always, you can put on the type of button, that's fine. That doesn't really do much, uh, but what we really want to do is we want to say ion button. Uh, that's, that's the big one, right? Um, and on here, we'll just put the word blue. Uh, and so now we should have um, an ion button that's blue. So you can see that it's got this look uh, that ionic gives things. You'll notice that we said it was four columns wide, uh, but it actually didn't stretch to four columns wide. It actually just fit to the word blue. If you, if you want it to stretch, uh, you can just add the, the attribute block, um, and then it will actually stretch to the four columns. I prefer that, so I'm going to do that. Uh, and also, as always, type equals button is not strictly required. You can survive without it. Let's go ahead and make this uh, call a function, just like we've done many, many times in this course. Uh, let's just call the function set color, uh, and we'll pass in the word uh, blue. So whenever somebody clicks this, it's going to call a function set color, uh, which does not currently exist, so we probably ought to go make it. Um, and so this is just like we've done so many times before. So set color void, uh, and we'll just start with a log. Um, and this should have received a parameter. Uh, we'll just call the parameter selected color, just because it doesn't matter what we call it, and it's a string. Uh, and inside here, we'll just say uh, to do uh, set the color in Firebase uh, to. Uh, and then we'll just print out the selected color here. Uh, you can do it with um, a comma, or you can do it with a plus symbol, or you can do it with string interpolation, I don't care. So what should happen here is whenever we click the button, uh, it should say blue, right? So we say console, click the button, it says set the color in Firebase to blue. Uh, so we have one button, uh, and it passes in blue, uh, but we're actually going to make quite a few buttons. Before we mass produce our buttons, though, I want to show you one more thing, um, and that's that call four sets the columns to four, but a trick you can do is you can actually do things like call md hyphen four, um, and you can change it from four to say two, and what that does is on medium sized screens, it uses only two columns. So if you wanted to like see this, you could see like 
Um, once you get to a medium sized screen, uh, I forget what size that happens, but you can see that it the button got smaller, uh, which is kind of a neat thing. So there's the transition from large to medium. I'm not too worried about things like that, but um, even if you're doing mobile development, iPads are medium screens, right? Uh, so you can actually um, kind of get a different display for iPad using tricks like that. Now that I've got my button how I want though, I'm gonna mass produce it. Uh, so I've got one, uh, but what I'm gonna make is a total of four more. So one, two, three, four more. Uh, and these are gonna be uh, green is my second button, uh, and then red. And then I think I've got purple is my next one, and then rose red. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give these slightly different attributes so that we can see the different looks of buttons. Um, so we also need to pass in set color blue, set color green, uh, set color red, uh, set color purple. Uh, and then for rose red, um, it's actually a special hex color. So it's number sign eight with five zeros, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and so now we should have all those different buttons displaying, which is cool. Uh, and you can see how each one was four columns big, so three fit per row. Uh, and of course, if you were to go to a uh, medium screen, um, you'd see that they're each too big. Uh, so five fit uh, with space for one more even, right? So it's kind of neat how the grid system works. I wanted our first app to use the grid system. Uh, and as you click these things, that one says blue, then that one says green, red, purple, uh, and then rose red, which is that number. Um, since I don't care about this app being ugly, uh, I'm gonna show you different looks for buttons that you can do. Uh, one thing you can do is you can change the color. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this color uh, to secondary of the green button. Uh, and you can see it turn green. That's very similar to what Angular Material does with like primary and accent. Uh, the word secondary, um, is really just one of their variables in their, their theme variables. So you can see that here's primary, which is blue, uh, and secondary is green. I just happen to know that it was green. One thing I do like about Ionic is you can just add more things. Uh, so if you just wanted to add rose red, um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, you could just do it, right? So like in Angular Material, if you wanted to add like, you've got primary, you've got accent, and if you want to add it more, I don't really know how to do it, but this just makes it so easy just to just add another color. I will use that here in a little bit. I guess we could cheat and do it now. So down here, we'll just say color equals uh, rose red. Uh, and as soon as I save that up, the bottom one should uh, change to rose red, which is cool. There are other attributes that you can add for buttons, uh, which I think are neat. Um, so the red button, I'm gonna say outline. Outline gives a cool look to buttons. It kind of gives this outline look. Uh, if you're a big fan of iOS, uh, they use buttons that are clear. So it's, it's really just kind of the, the name that just kind of looks like that. So I just kind of wanted to show you some of the things you could do. So you could um, pick one of the different colors. Uh, you could make your own color. Uh, you could use outline, you could use clear whatever you think looks good for your UI. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Uh, actually, that's a pretty good place to, to cut things off this time. So I'm gonna go into my Git, look at the diff, uh, and I can see that I changed those things in the home area. My home CSS, I made the whole thing. I guess I could take some of my spaces out. Uh, in TypeScript, uh, I added that method call, and here I added rose red. So this is preparing the HTML for favorite color. Cool. Uh, so happy with uh, what we got done this time. Uh, we'll come back next time, and we'll push some of these things to Firebase. See you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.